Okay, uh, let us start the course. So welcome to uh, introduction to Git. My name is uh, Birgitte Brusø and I work at hspc 2 n And my colleague uh, Pedro Roseda May, who is also working at hspc 2 n is here. And also Diana Yusan from uh, Upmax will also be part of this course, as will Bjorn Klarama, also from Upmax. So, um, we have four instructors for the course who will each be teaching one part. And uh, I will start by uh, talking a bit about uh, this course itself and uh, give the introduction to the course info. And I will share my screen, just one moment. Okay. Uh, and I should probably uh, repeat for those that uh, joined very recently that uh, I will be recording the lectures, but not the exercises. I will probably let the recording run during some of the exercises so I won't forget to turn it back on again but I will cut away everything there. So uh, there you can ask openly. If you don't want to be recorded, then just keep your microphone and uh, your camera off during the lectures and uh, you won't be recorded. We, will ha we have a Q&A document and uh, I shared the link to that in uh, the important info email I sent to you. And there is also the important info document, which mainly just uh, lists everything about the, the course, like Zoom links and where to find stuff. And you should have both the links in uh, that email. And otherwise we will probably be sharing it uh, off and on here in the, the chat, so to repeat it. Uh, anyway, the slides, as you may have seen, is uh, on uh, HackMD. And if you go to that link, then that is uh, where you can find the slides and where they will look nicer than the ones I have put on GitHub. I downloaded the Markdown language uh, slides on, I uh, put them on GitHub, but they will not render completely correctly. So uh, you can use them if you want to look at it offline, but otherwise, use the ones on HackMD. So this is what I mentioned. These are the instructors and uh, the course is five days, half days. We start each morning at nine and go to around 12. And each uh, session will have some uh, exercises except for the very first ones, uh, that is today. There will not really be much exercises except for uh, you can set up your accounts on GitHub and uh, make SSH keys work there if you haven't already. So we will go through that and otherwise that will be repeated for the teamwork session on Friday. So all the lectures will be in this main Zoom room. And as I just said, most modules have hands-ons again in this, this room. Uh, if uh, anyone will need help that uh, they probably, they may want to share their screen or whatever and don't want to do in the uh, main session, then uh, we will create breakout rooms for doing that. Otherwise uh, you will be working yourself on your own computers or using HPC to end depending on what you have chosen. Uh, but we will not have breakout rooms except to help people who want to go and ask questions in private. But on Friday, we will have breakout rooms and there you will be split out into small groups of at least three people. And then you will try working together on making how it will be to have a small project or whatever and share it on GitHub and try pushing and pulling things there. So. And if someone ends up having problems, then we had a set up session, but otherwise if there's problems with your Git, then just ask and we will try to help. 
And uh, during the lectures, please ask the questions in the Q&A page. We will probably try attempt to also look in the chat for the Zoom. But the thing is that there it easily gets very confused if many things scroll by. So it's easier to find it in the Q&A page. And that also will be preserved so you will, can go back and look at it later and also to see what other people asked and got answered because that might help also. So. And here on this slides, if uh, you want to see the text form of it, I just want to show you that uh, if you scroll down, you see here, I have a pen symbol. I click that and then it will go and show you how it looks here. Uh, since I have access to it, I can edit it, but you would just get this part. And it might be easier to look at it that way. It depends on what you like and what it's for. So, And uh, so this, the first day, we will have uh, more formatting problems. Okay, uh, introduction and setup, that's what we are just having now. And then we would move on to motivation, why to use version management. And then also we will look at basic concepts, uh, this everything like blobs, trees, commits, references and everything. And tomorrow we will have basic commands and it will be split into two parts. And there will be hands-on for each part. And then also we will be starting uh, the commit tree uh, section, session there, which will continue on the third day. And I think I will just take this instead. No, where was it? Anyway, here. Yeah. So here we have uh, on the third day, we will talk the rest of traversing the commit tree, then start out with the branches, which continues on the fifth day, on the fourth day. And there also is the working with remotes. And then the last day we will only have the teamwork session. So. And now the question is where were I? There. So I will attempt to go on to the motivation part. I have difficulties clicking up here because of this bar from Zoom. All right, so I will go to the session, the first actual lecture, so, which is why would you use version control? And first, what is version control? And there's this quote that come from Wikipedia, which says in software engineering version control, also known as revision control, source control or source code management is a class of systems responsible for managing changes to computer programs, documents, large websites or other collections of information. And that's actually a fairly good uh, definition. So version control systems are systems responsible for managing changes. So why would you want to use version control? Well, if you have uh, an ideal world, then things are developing in a linear fashion for your project, for instance. You have written something on Monday, you make some improvements to it. Tuesday, you make improvements. Wednesday, you make improvements. So there is no nothing strange here. There are no errors. You don't need to go back and you always know what everyone else is doing. This is how the world would be ideally. And then at the end, you just have everything finished. Of course, in real world, that is not how the world is. Because uh, if you make a new version, it could be anything between a complete catastrophe and a major breakthrough. So you can have, say, you make some improvements on the first day on Monday, and then you know, next day, you make mistakes and then the whole Wednesday you spend on correcting that. And that is a vastly more normal way of developing a project. 
and all your co-workers they may not know what the, the others are doing or not completely in any case so we are fixing earlier mistakes and also other people's mistakes sometimes and they are fixing our mistakes so we want to go back to an earlier version sometimes and say this just did not work we will just go back and start over and that is an easy thing to do with a version control system so you had the mistakes on the second day you go back to what you had on the first day and then just continue from there on the third day with new improvements and this earlier version well if you're not using a version control system then maybe you're using control z or you are just naming your files in some suitable way in your directory or you make directories for each day or you make a backup each day all of these things have problems because you can easily make mistakes for instance the controlled set has limits you can't go back uh, indefinitely and you can have overwritten stuff you may have made errors your hardware has errors or you don't find out until it's a little bit too late for you to go back this way and also another thing is how much should you save do you save a full copy each time of everything only of certain files and that very quickly uses a lot of space also how do you organize these versions and how do you find out what the difference is between different versions so very difficult to manage and also there could be granularity you have it split up it's not just one file it's many files some parts of the project have improvements some have mistakes that need correction all of it just makes it worse. So how to solve this? You can do that hopefully with version control or you can at least make it easier because the version control system will store history using snapshots, which here is called commits. And each snapshot or commit is representing the project at a given point in time. And this version control system will also manage these snapshots and their associated metadata. And uh, you will have naming, you can have tags, comments, dates, authors, etc. Comments are important. And uh, of course, if you don't make a good uh, comment when you make a commit, then it may not help us much. I mean, you can still go back to what you had yesterday, but you may have several commits that you need to look at. Whereas if you write that today I fixed the error in part four of the project or something like this, then maybe you can actually see which commit it was that you needed to make changes to or go back to. And it's easy to move between different snapshots and we will look at that later in the week and uh, you can handle different degrees of granularity and you can even handle multiple development paths which is called branches and that is also very common if you actually have a big project so how do you compare or join these different commits or snapshots uh, version control system make it easy to do so you have name revisions you have the aforementioned comments which are hopefully useful there's time information so you know that you should go back to what was yesterday or the day before there's author information you can see who made the change and there is diff tools so you can see difference between the different snapshots easily there's also search tools and you can do bisection search going back uh, a few days see oh this was too far back i will just go back half as long and things like this version control systems also allow joining or merging of different snapshots or commits and it is easy to experiment with ideas this way and one of the most important areas for using uh, version control systems is in collaboration 
because it always gets a lot more difficult and messy when you are several people who are working on the same project. So this is uh, one of the main functions of it. And you will have uh, the usual setup, which is there's one server or remote, and then you have multiple clients that are working with it. So you will work locally on your own computer, and then you will send or push the changes to the server. And then the version control system will handle keeping track of what has been done and by whom. And this is a much safer way since mistakes can be easily remedied. And you can also uh, merge the contributions of several people this way. Another good thing with version control system is that it functions as a backup. So locally, the system will maintain a copy of each file. And usually it will only store the changes between the files or in some cases, depending on the version control system, the files that have changed. But in any case, it uses a lot less uh, storage space than it would if you were doing some other local backup of uh, where you kept a, a new copy each day, for instance. And globally, lost files can be recovered from the server. So integration. Version control system like Git are integrated with several services. Uh, you can use it together with HackMD and you can use it with Overleaf and several others. And GitHub can set up a great many things. It's possible to do websites and slides and other things through it. And of course you can store history, distribute it. You can use it for uh, uh, showcasing your project so that people can have it there for download. You can test stuff, bug reports, etc. And you have probably seen it used for many of these things. So summing up version control systems are keeping track of your files and other output. It tracks what's created and modified. It tracks who made the modifications, why the modifications were made. And of course, again, we come back to the good commit comments, which is always important. So what are practical use cases for version control systems? Well, a very common one is source code. A great many version control systems are designed specifically for managing source code. Uh, it can use, be used for managing deployment. You can have production, development, testing, etc. You can have different branches for it. And also to manage the published versions. And for instance, if you have some experimental features, you can easily manage that through version control systems. And of course, for bug hunting. But it's not just source code. It can also be used for writers, artists, composers, where you can store different uh, versions of your manuscript or whatever in it. And you can go back and say, I no longer want to keep this whole new part I wrote because it made no sense. Let me go back and start over from what I got a couple of days ago or something. It is good for the tech files. You can track versions of a manuscript when it was submitted, revised and or accepted. And it's of course good for collaboration between several authors. And in high performance computing, you can use it for batch files and data. You may make frequent changes or at least changes to your batch script and you can track different versions of it and you can easily check out the used configurations afterwards. You can track input and output files. Of course, this is limited to smallish files. Uh, if you have many gigabytes of files, then this is not really practical. So some examples of version control system because Git is by far not the only one. The first one was SCCS and it was created in 1972 at Bell Labs. And it was only available for Unix and it worked only for source code files. And then in 1985 come the R 
CS, the revision control system. And that uh, usually is superseded by systems like CVS, which was a wrapper on top of RCS. And I know there are still some that uses CVS some places for that, the centralized version control system. It was uh, released in uh, July, 1986. And then there is the Apache Subversion SVN that is released in 2004, which was meant to replace CVS. And that also is still used. And then there is BitKeeper which was released in May 2000. And that has distributed version control and it was also shortly used for developing the Linux kernel. It was however proprietary and it is no longer maintained. So uh, Linus Torvald started Git in April 2005 and he originally started it for developing the Linux kernel. And he was inspired by BitKeeper and he wanted distributed version control but also open source. So, and Git is what we are going to focus on in this uh, course. <laughs>